Christmas um, less than a week away, so that's always exciting. Uh, glad to see each of y'all here and those that are tuning in Facebook and YouTube Live. Grateful for that also. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. It is a beautiful day that you've given to us. And, and Lord, as we anticipate uh, Christmas Day, and Lord, let it just remind us of your great love and mercy for us. You sent your own precious Son so that we might live. And so, Lord, in this we rejoice. Pray that, Father, we would never get over our salvation, that we would never get over what a great gift you've given to us. Bless us this day, Lord, as we open your word. Bless us, Lord, as we come before you in prayer. May you be magnified. May you be exalted. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. And God's people say it. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're going to be in Philippians, uh, Philippians chapter 2. If that sounds familiar, we, uh, that's, the sermon was based on that this past Sunday. And part of the cantata was based on what we saw in Philippians chapter 2. But while you're turning there, I just wanted to remind you of things ongoing this month. Uh, Lottie Moon Christmas offering, we take that throughout the month of December. It's still not too late to contribute to this. Uh, we want to see the gospel go forward around the world in multiple, multiple ways. And so uh, we encourage you, to, as always, to give generously to this. Uh, also, as mentioned before, Christmas Day is on Monday. Uh, so that means Christmas Eve is Sunday, and so just things will be a little bit different on this particular Sunday. Uh, during our Bible community group time or Sunday school time, instead of individual classes meeting, we'll be meeting here in the fellowship hall, and there'll be a full breakfast. Uh, you know, this past Sunday we had a, a more like a snack, had a, a small type breakfast. I'm grateful for Teresa and Mark putting all that together, but we're looking forward to a more full breakfast this coming uh, Sunday, so be sure to just come in here. We'll have a brief devotion as well that day, uh, but we'll have our regular normal worship service in the morning, but we will have on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. our candlelight service, and that's always a special time. Uh, the topic for this one is, why would I want to go to church on Christmas Eve? Well, you got to come on Christmas Eve to find out why you should, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> The main point, I will give you the hint on this, is that God has a message for you. And I'm not just saying that in specific sense and like it's just uh, God spoke to me in some unique way. No, he spoke to all of us and his message to us is that he sent his own precious son. So come Christmas Eve, invite people to come. Uh, it's a wonderful service, wonderful time to, to reach out as well. Also. Just be aware, starting in January, the Good News Club is going to begin January 8th. We'll be meeting here in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, it's still not too late if you'd like to volunteer with this ministry. Again, it's a ministry of child evangelism fellowship, and so you have to go through, fill out their forms, go through their background check, that type of stuff, in order to uh, be uh, accepted as one of their volunteers. We had a meeting the other night. Uh, learn some more information about that, but it's not too late. If you're interested in helping with that, please come see me. Uh, but encourage people, if you know children in the community that would benefit kindergarten through fifth grade to be part of a children's ministry, Monday afternoons from 2.30 uh, to about 3.30 to about 4 o'clock, uh, let them know. They can go to the church website. Uh, there's a space there they can click on it and it'll take them to a registration form. If you know some kids and you want to take registration forms to them, hey, we've got those here. We can print those out and have that available. But be in prayer for that. That's a great opportunity for us to reach out in the community. All right, so we're going to be in Philippians chapter 2. And as I mentioned this past Sunday, we, we looked there at chapters 2, verses 5 uh, through 11, and we saw how Jesus is the Son of God, but more than that, we understand He is the divine uh, Son of God who added humanity to His deity. The Son of God is eternal. As long as God has existed, and God has always existed, there was never a time when God did not exist. God has always been Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, amen. From eternity past, eternity, He has always been. But God did something unique, and that's what we celebrate at Christmas is that the Son of God left heaven and left glory and humbled himself. 
he basically set aside some of his uh, glory so that he could come and be with us and be among us and be one of us in all ways except for sin. And again, it kind of blows our mind to think that the creator of the universe he was born in there in a, the main, laid in a manger. Uh, just That's how he decided to enter into this humanity to redeem us and to save us. And so Philippians chapter 2 points this out. Uh, we saw before that in John chapter 1 talks about again that the word is God, the word was God, the word is God, and so we see many of the attributes of Christ. This Sunday we're going to see uh, the, in Colossians chapter 1 the same type thing, and then on Christmas Eve we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 1. And These are what are called the great Christological passages who speak to the humanity and the divinity of Jesus Christ. So in light of this, the fact that Jesus humbles himself and becomes obedient even to the point of death, what are we to do? What, what's going to happen? And I'm going to just start in verse 9. It says this, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, this past Sunday, the choir did a beautiful cantata. And you guys did a wonderful job with that. Amen. It was called, I Call Amen. Him Lord. And I hope that everyone will call Him Lord here and now. But if they don't call upon Him as Lord here and now, one day they will. And that's what Philippians tells us about. And so in light of this fact that everyone will one day have to call Jesus Lord, how should we live? And that's what I wanted to focus on this morning, is beginning in verse 12 this aspect that the fact that if everyone one day will have to bow the knee, those who do so here willingly do it out of love, out of acceptance, out of joy and peace. Later, those who did not trust him here and now will grudgingly and, and be forced to recognize him as their judge and as their the one who has the right to punish them for their sin. And they will acknowledge him as Lord in that way. Our desire is to acknowledge him here and now because after that it's too late so what are we to do how are we to live so this is what Paul says in verse 12 he says therefore so he, again that therefore shows he's summarizing what was just said prior to this about who Jesus is and what he has done he says therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not, not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence so he's saying I've heard that you guys continue to walk in the faith he says, you didn't just act Christian when I was around. He says, I'm hearing reports that, guess what? You're still following through. You're still being a follower of Jesus. He says, I'm grateful to hear this. But he says, do this. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, there's a key word right here. Work out your own salvation. It's a, it's a personal thing. That we have to do, yes, we gather together as a body of believers and we should all be working out our faith together. But it's something, it's an individual responsibility. Work out what? Your own salvation. But notice this, don't, it doesn't say work for your salvation. And that's what a lot of groups out there believe. That's what a lot of religions teach. Work for yourself. Do good works and then you'll be accepted by God. No, that's not how it it, it, it works. We are to what? Trust God. He comes into our lives through the Holy Spirit, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, through believing in what he did upon the cross. He dwells within us. And what he's telling us is work out. The salvation that God has given to you, the good news that he has placed within your heart, the, the gospel of peace, we now have peace with God. He says, guess what? Work it out. Let it be evident. Let the world see that you're a follower of Jesus. Work out what? Your own salvation, this free gift that God has given to you. And again, you can't get there based on your mom's faith or your dad's faith, your grandparents' faith or the preacher's faith or the Sunday school teacher's faith. 
you have to put your personal faith, your personal trust in Christ. And he says, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Wait a minute. I thought being in the presence of God, we should always just feel love and joy and just happiness all the time. But it, what is this fear and trembling aspect? And that he goes on to explain that in verse 13. He says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. He's saying God's working in your life. And that, that's an awesome thing to think about. And it may not always look like what we want it to look like. Isn't it possible God can teach us lessons through trials and tribulations? Isn't it possible that God can allow certain circumstances in our lives that we don't fully comprehend? But in the midst of that, what it gives us an opportunity to what? Work out our salvation with fear and trembling? You know, it's, it's a difficult thing at times to, to follow Jesus. Again, we live in a nation where we have tremendous religious liberty and religious freedom. We really do. And yes, they're being eroded in many ways. There are a lot of court cases and things going through the court systems even now that may hinder some of our freedoms in that way. But we still have tremendous, the fact that we're gathered here right now this is a blessing and we should never take it for granted because there are some places around the world many places around the world that a group this size getting together to meet makes the government upset makes the government mad and they could come break it up and they could persecute us take away our freedoms take away our property those kinds of and that happens daily around the world so when it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling you know what there may Places around the world, they're like to really step out in faith. You're, you're, you may be asking for persecution, but God is still working in you, even in the midst of that persecution. And so, the Apostle Paul is reminding us it's God who works in you. Remember this salvation that has been placed in you. God didn't just put it there and then just say, "Okay, I'm done. You're on your own now." Know what? He's working in us. As I mentioned before, he comes and he dwells within us by the Holy Spirit. And to think of this, what is the Holy Spirit's job in our life? To make us holy. To make us more like Jesus. To reveal within us sin. So that we would, what, confess our sin before the Lord. That we would confess that, yes, we've fallen short. And in that sense, what? That's fear and trembling. We recognize this is what I actually deserve. But by God's grace, I've been forgiven. By God's grace, I am cleansed. And so he's saying, work out your salvation. So what does that look like? Again, verse 14, he goes on to explain it. He says, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fear fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. He says, do all things without complaining and disputing. Oh, wait. Are we grumblers sometimes? Are we complainers sometimes? Amen. We, yeah. we, we unfortunately are. Yes. He tells us what? Do it without complaining. Do it without grumbling and those kinds of things. Are arguing. He says, work it out. Because guess what? We live in a crooked and perverse generation. We as believers need to be showing the world something different. The world is full of grumblers and complainers and disputers and arguers. I mean, just turn on the television, right? You, you see that. It's full of, we shouldn't be that way. Now, does that mean the, we're always going to get along with the world? No. Because if we stand for truth and we stand for righteousness, the world doesn't like it, and they will come and try to shut us down and try to keep us quiet, and try to just say, hey, you can't say those kinds of things. But what we are to do as believers in Christ is to follow the Lord humbly, just as Jesus did. Humbled himself, what? Became obedient even to the point of death. Death, what? On a cross. We're to be humble and obedient. And so even when we're treated shamefully, even when the world despises us, the world will see that we reflect the light of God. This is a perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. 
you know, the other week I tried to do an illustration to show how we're not the source of the light, that we reflect the light. Now, if you remember that, it had a laser pointer, and I and I could I'm telling you, when I did the practice, it worked. I could aim it at my phone, and it would come straight back down. And I couldn't do it with, of course, when I'm on camera and when in front of everybody, it won't work. But but you know, it's amazing how what we are to what reflect the light of God. We're to reflect His glory. We don't generate that glory. He does because of who he is. But he shines in us. He says, and we're to be a light in this dark world. There's darkness all around. It's here in the United States. It's in South America. It's in Europe and Asia, Africa, Australia, Antarctica. There's not even that many people that live in Antarctica, but there's, there's sin down there as well. I mean, there's darkness all around. And we need the light of the gospel to go forward. And so he says, hold fast, verse 16, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Paul is writing from a prison cell. He's under arrest because of his faith in Christ. But yet he's writing as one who's victorious. He's writing as one who is still persevering. And he's encouraging them, hold fast to the word of life. He says, so that I can rejoice knowing that my labors were not in vain among you. That I can hear the good reports that you are still walking with the Lord. He says, and I'm looking forward to that, the day of Christ, what, the day when Jesus returns, the day of the Lord. We went through that a few weeks ago with Zephaniah. The day of the Lord is coming. And are we closer? Absolutely. One day closer. We want to present ourselves before the Lord, walking in obedience and receiving him with joy. And so he says, I'm being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice in service of your faith. That I concept of a drink offering is like this. If you take a, a, a drink offering to the Lord, you pour it out, and guess what you can't do? You can't put it back in. Like if you take a bottle of water and you pour it out on a dry ground, what are the chances of you getting all that water back in that bottle? None. And so it was a sacrifice. You gave it not expecting to get it back. So that's how we're to serve the Lord in the sense. We're to just serve him fully and completely, really not expecting anything in return in the sense like the health, wealth, prosperity gospel would teach. Oh, the health, wealth, prosperity gospel. Oh, you do this for God, and he's going to bless you with this, this, and this, and this. Really? Paul served God, and guess where he got? He got stuck in jail. And he eventually got killed, martyred for his faith. Right? So we're to serve the Lord. We're to what? Work out this salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. You know, this time of year is a wonderful time. But there is one thing I've learned. I, I have to be more careful now. It's all the sweets. All the stuff. Oh, man. It is like starting about Thanksgiving on. Oh, boy. I used to get eat that stuff and it didn't bother me. You know, I had to eat it. And not anymore, man. I have to be careful with that. But you know, I don't think I'm the only person with that problem. Because what's the number one New Year's resolution? Everyone has been eating all the goodies and stuff from Thanksgiving to Christmas and come New Year's Day, I'm going to go on a diet. Yeah. I'm going to start it. I'm going to join a gym. You know, all these gyms out there, they're looking forward to January 1. Because <laughs> all these people, that's when they, that's their Black Friday, right? That's when they start making all the money that first of the year. But you know what? There's a sense of that that, yes, physical exercise is good for you. You know, and it is good for your body. It's good for your mentality. It's good for your mental health. To, to be active and to get out there and to work those things out. The scripture is telling us to work out your salvation. You know, if we're not striving in the faith, in a sense, if we're not persevering, you know, we're not doing what the Lord's called us to do. We're to let his joy be displayed. We're to let his love be displayed in our life. The, the fruit of the Spirit, 
the patience and the joy, all those things were to let be displayed. So we're to what? Work it out. And let's not wait till January 1. We can start that today. Amen. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because God is still working in us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and, and praise you for this time. Pray that, Lord, you would just be glorified in the things that we have said today and looked at. And, and that, Lord, you would just work in us. And Lord, we acknowledge that you are. Forgive us, Lord, when we hinder your work in our own lives because of our, our desires to just do our own thing. But, Father, I pray for many in our community to hear the gospel of Jesus whether it's through the Good News Club or even people coming to our Christmas Eve service or, or just coming to a, a worship service because, Lord, you touch their heart to just be in church. And I pray, Father, that we would shine as lights in this dark world just as you instructed us in this passage of Scripture. You shine in us and we reflect that love and grace and mercy out in the world. So, Father, thank you for this time. Be with those in our congregation that are sick. Be with those that uh, aren't able to attend. They're homebound. I just pray, Father, you sustain and bless them at this time. And I pray, Father, you just uh, uh, strengthen our church with the, the Good News Club, the ministry that begins in January. Just go before us, Lord, that this would all uh, go well. And that, Lord, there would be no uh, problems whatsoever. That, Lord, we would just see the gospel go forward. So, Father, we praise you. Lord, we love you. Pray this in Jesus' name. God's people say. Amen. 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 All right. Well, again, I appreciate you guys being here. Let's uh, say our vision verse, and then we'll conclude this time, but then we'll continue on in prayer. Let's say this. Declare his glory among the nations. We get to do this. So God bless you.